Now, just an example to move away from drawing mice for a second while still learning and practicing our surfacing features as well as our lofts with guide curves. I want to draw this um, uh, surfaced vase. And here it is um, after it's been rendered. And as much as possible, we want to get smooth curvature around all the edges. It would be difficult enough to draw that with just the basic extrude and extrude cut features. So in SOLIDWORKS, we'll begin by opening a new part. And the measurements aren't critical, but I will give dimensions for them. And on the top plane, I'm going to draw an ellipse. And we will dimension that to have that value, half the major being 100 and half the minor being 55. And just to fully constrain the ellipse, I'm going to hold control and pick the extreme left and right points and add a horizontal constraint. Close the sketch and that is the base of the, um, the object. I now want to go to features, reference, geometry and plane. Use the top plane as my reference and make sure I get a plane offset a value of 350 upwards. And on that plane, I will start a sketch, spacebar, normal two, and this is going to be another ellipse. So again, I'll start at the center and I'll lay down the ellipse. And this time we're going to dimension it to be 50, which would be half the major, and 25 will be half the minor. Let's try that again. 25 vertically. Hold control, select the extreme left and right points to make sure that we put that in as being horizontal. Close the sketch, and I don't need that plane anymore, so I'll right click and hide that. Let's try the surface loft. It's not going to look right yet, but surface loft between the bottom and the top will give us that pretty basic shape. And you might remember from an earlier tutorial that I said if you set the start and end constraints to normal to profile, you get a slightly nicer um, and a slightly greater uh, amount of control. But I'm going to press the red X. I don't want that. On the front plane, I want to start another sketch of a spline. And I want to draw a shape that looks something like this. And I'm not going to put in too many spline points, but I'll put in a few. Going at a slight uh, 3D um, rotation, hold control, hit the point, hit the curve, and hit pierce. Normally, I would click this and set that to either vertical or horizontal, but in this case, I'm happy to leave it where it is. And up here, I'll do the same. So hold control, hit the point and the curve and pierce them. And if you want to make any edits there, feel free to just pick those points and drag them, but I'm happy enough with the way that looks there. If you wanted at the top, maybe you could set that to be horizontal. See how it looks? It looks good, actually. Let's leave that there. While I'm in the sketch, um, I'll hit spacebar, normal two, and I will use my center line to go through the middle, and we're going to mirror that. So I'll mirror that curve through that line, and now I have a nice set of guide curves there. Similarly, on the uh, right plane this time, I start another sketch and put in a slightly narrower set of guide curves. I'll just spend a moment piercing those as well. And up the top the same. And seeing as I made that last one horizontal, I will make this one horizontal. And we just give these a little bit of a change there. So uh, I wonder, can I actually mirror through that existing line? Probably not, no. I don't think so. So I'll add a center line to mirror through. That other line is there, but it's in the other sketch. So I'm going to mirror that to a curve through that line. And I'm now set up with all my guide curves. Now we're going to go to a lofted surface and begin by lofting from the bottom ellipse to the top ellipse, then activating guide curves. And I'm going to click the guide curve to the left and press the green tick. Guide curve to the right, press the green tick. And left, green tick right green tick press ok and now we have the surface we're after so if you wanted you could get back in there and make any edits to those as you see fit i might just get the sketch there right click edit sketch i might just pull that in a little and the good thing is as you pull those in you can see it changes both sides 
Okay, so I'm happy enough to leave it where it was actually. Now on the front plane, let's start another sketch. And I want to draw a slight ellipse, so it's going to almost look like a circle, but it's going to be ever so slightly elliptical. And I'm going to measure this to be, let's say, 90. And let's say its overall height then will be just 85. And again, I want to make sure it's horizontal, so select the two points by holding Control and set horizontal. And to fully constrain it, then I need to give it a height up. So from the center to there, is one two five we'll say now what we're going to do is also put another sketch so we're going to go to sketch a, another ellipse on the same plane it's important that this is a second a, a separate sketch i should say space bar and this time it's going to be a slightly more pronounced ellipse and it's going to be uh, let's say 60 by those two points there. Let's make it 50. Select control, two points, and vertical or horizontal, I should say. Now we're locked in. Now what I want to do is cut out the larger shape from the object. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You could project the curves on. Uh, or what I'm going to do, just to show a different way, is to extrude, extrude that surface. So go surfaces, extruded surface, the larger one, and we go mid plane, and drag it out like that. Now what we can do is go to a trim surface. The trim tool is this, and I want to remove that piece and that piece. And you can see now the hole has been cut. Now that I think about it, I will actually go back and show the other way as well. So right click and delete that feature. Yes. Right click and delete the extrude surface. Yes. And this time I will actually project the sketch on. So let's go to features, curves, project curve, or split line will actually work too. For now, uh, project curve, sketch on faces. That's the sketch, that's the face. And you can see it puts the curve on for me. So now we're going to go to surfaces and trim surface again. The trim tool is this circle. Remove this section there. Now I just see if I can actually right click and edit that. Uh, reverse projection would allow me to put it the other way as well. So I may have to do this. Let's see, this isn't actually as efficient as I thought. You may have to now right click uh, the sketch and make it visible again. Now you need to go to curves, project curve, and project that curve onto this back, but select reverse projection. And it gives it there on the back as well. Doesn't matter which way you do, as long as you know um, how to do it one way. So again, trim surface, that's the trim tool. Let's just make sure I get the right trim tool. That's the trim tool. Remove section, there we have it. I now want to hide that sketch because I'm finished with it. By the way, this little hand that you see, the icon, means that's a shared sketch. So it's a sketch that's used by more than one feature. And I have that curve too as well. Let's leave it there for a second. If you wanted, you could set up guide curves to guide the curvature from the front to the middle to the back. I'm not going to in this case. I'm going to use a boundary surface this time. Select the edge on the front, the edge in the middle, and the edge at the back. And it pulls a nice curved surface between them. And you can actually set the, um, the curvature, uh, to lots of different types of curvature here if you don't have uh, profiles or guide curves, I should say. As much as possible, you want to try and make sure those green dots line up. So I'm going to drag them to make sure they do line up. Press the green tick, and there you have it. So I'll right click and hide that curve. I don't want to see that. Uh, there's another few curves there that are visible. Um, that's the one. It doesn't have a bottom. Let's use the fill surface to fix that. So fill surface, hit the bottom, and now it does have a bottom. It is hollow, so let's go to uh, thicken. We may have to knit the surface first of all. Uh, we, I should do, yeah. Let's knit all the surfaces together because there are two, three different surfaces. So once they're knitted, now I can thicken them in one go. Let's thicken that to be four mil, and it makes a solid for us. And all that's left then is to do a regular feature, uh, a regular fillet. So we may have to put that on inside and outside. And we'll just see how that looks. Not bad. So I should probably should have done that in the same feature, but still, it's okay. And 
and this may need a smaller fillet it does so i'll remove those from the fillet feature what i'll actually do here is try a full round fillet i'll go to fillet full round fillet select the top box and the outside the middle box and the in uh, the middle band and the bottom box and the inside and great it worked it put a full round fillet at the top there for me you can also fill at the bottom as well just to finish it off make it look more realistic uh, that's not a full round fillet that's just a regular fillet remember to fill it inside and outside and one last thing let's just give that a section and see how it looks and you can see not bad so that's a nice enough exercise to um, help practice and even teach the basic surfacing features and it's also a very simple enough example to demonstrate the use of guide curves when you're lofting